Within Power Automate Desktop, you will almost always be using variables, specifically text variables. My name is Brad Dara, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you some time-saving tips that you can use when working with text variables within Power Automate Desktop. Let's learn. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set a variable. So under the variables uh, folder within actions, we're gonna go at the very bottom here, it says set variable. I'm gonna click and drag that into our canvas. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this variable text variable. Very basic. And then for the value, I'm just going to type in Brad was here. Click save. And you can see underneath the flow variables, it now has created my text variable. There's nothing in it. it hasn't been initialized yet until we run. So let's run. I'm going to run the single action here. And what it should now do is under text variable, it should now say Brad was here. Double click on it, we see that it's a text value. This is basic, this is, this is as basic as it comes, okay? Here's a tip. Now for whatever reason, you wanted to have a, a, a value of let's say 1000 as a text variable. Let's see what happens when I do that. So I go back and I edit the text variable and I type in 1000. Hit save. Let's see what happens. Run. If I go over and it's finished completing the run, if I go over to the variable here, it looks the same. It looks like it has a thousand in there. If I double click on it, it now says it's a numeric value. Because it looks at this and says, oh, this looks like a number, I'm not going to treat this as a text value anymore. I'm going to treat it as a number. How do we get around that? Well, one way you could try doing this is doing it this way. If I go back and I double click on that text variable again, and I surround it with single quotes, just like that. Hit save. Let's see what happens. Run. It's going to run. It's going to set that variable. Now, when I go back into the text variable here, double click on it, not quite what we want. It actually is treating it as a text value now. It's a text variable, but it's not exactly what we want because we don't want those single quotes in there. So how do we make Power Automate treat the value of 1000 as strictly a text. Here's the tip. Go into the variable again. And what you do is you surround it with percent signs. What percent signs will do is it'll treat it as a variable and it'll evaluate the contents of within what's in the beginning and ending percent signs. It'll actually evaluate that first and then set the variable. So now I want to hit save and run. Let's see what happens. Wait for it to run. And now when we go back into the text variable, double click on it, it now shows it as a text value, or text value as a value of 1000. Okay, good tip to know. So let's go back. I'm gonna replace this with Brad was here. Okay, I'm gonna create a new variable. This is where we can start to look at the what are some of the values or, or attributes of this text variable. So I'm just going to do a copy paste, control C, control V to copy that action, double click this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I want to take a look at that text variable. So within, you can select the variable picker here and you can see that there is our text variable that has already been created, but you'll also notice that there's a drop down or there's a, a, a greater than sign that we can pick here. So we click on that and we have other things that we can choose associated with that text variable. So we can say length. So if I select length and I'm gonna change the variable name to just length. Save. Now I've got two variables, text variable and then the length. I run it. If I go over to the flow variables section, it'll show me as the text variable as Brad was here, but now it's saying, the length of that variable is 13 characters. Good. So now we can know what the length is. What else can we do with the text variable? Well, try it again. Control C, Control V with the action. Double click on it. And if I select the text variable and I open up the, expand the, uh, the values underneath it, is empty. We can determine whether or not this variable is empty or not. And what it's going to do is it's going to return a Boolean true or a false. I select that and I change the variable name to 
is empty. Hit save, let's run it. Now what should happen is it is empty should evaluate to false because it isn't empty. It's got 13 characters of, of data within that text variable. Shows it as that, right? All right, so let's say for example, I don't wanna have Brad is in here or Brad was here. I wanna have this blanked out and see what happens. Okay, let's do that. Go back, highlight. Let's take that away. It's an empty, called, considered an empty string. Let's see what happens when I hit save now. Oh, Power Automate is gonna complain. It's saying, hey, the parameter value can't be empty. Oh, so here's the error that occurred for this first action. Double click on it. Can't be empty. Okay, so how do you put a empty string? For whatever reason, and maybe I just wanna be able to initialize this variable and to initialize it as empty. Well, to double single, I put single, two single quotes in there, hit save, run. Now it should be empty, right? Well, not quite. Let's see what happens when I run it. It's still evaluating as empty, is empty false because it isn't empty. It's got two single quotes in it. It's a length of two. Okay, so how do we initialize a, a text variable as a zero length string? There's nothing in it, but I still want to be able to initialize it. Well, here's the trick. Again, go back into your, um, where you're setting the variable, surround the single quotes again with uh, the, the percent signs, the first, uh, before and after the, uh, the single quotes. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna evaluate that expression first before it sets it, and it's gonna evaluate it as, a, as an empty string. Hit save, let's run and see what happens. Is empty now should show as true, the length should be zero, and the text variable is an empty string. Okay. There's another tip that you might wanna need, or you might wanna remember for next time. So what else can we do? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back, set the variable back to Brad was here. Now you can also play with the case, both two upper and two lower. So let's try that. So I'm gonna copy my variable, and I'm gonna change this to be case. Oops. Change case. And I'm gonna highlight this. And if I select the element picker again, or the variable picker again, I go to text variable, and I can have under the, for that variable, this, the text variable that I've specified, I can say two upper. Okay. And I, I'm gonna make it uh, two lines within this, uh, with this in the variable. And I'm gonna say text variable two lower. And save, and let's run it. Now we have a new variable called change case. And now when it runs, what it should do is it should transform the upper and lower case Brad was here to both upper and lower. Another feature that you might be able, you might need to new, use um, when um, coding up your flows as well. Okay. One final variable trick that you can use. And now it's like, if I do this and I copy and paste it and I create a new one, it's called trimmed. Take this away. If I, if I select my text variable again, there is an option called trimmed. What trimmed will do is it'll take away any leading uh, white space characters or spaces before and after a variable. So I'm gonna say this is called trimmed. Hit save. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my original text variable here. And I'm gonna put a whole bunch of spaces in front of it and put a whole bunch of spaces after it. Now, when I hit save, let's run it and see what happens. It's gonna go through all the actions. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a new variable or text variable called trimmed. And you can see it just says Brad was here. This was the original one where it had the, the spaces before and after. And if I highlight it, you can see that there's spaces before and after. But after the trim, it's trimmed off the white spaces before and after the variable. So hopefully those little tips and tricks 
relating to string or sorry text variables within Power Automate will be able to help you out with your flows.